Hey guys, Jeff here with Passive Income Unlocked, and today I'm going to go over a few different ways that I use AnswerThePublic.com to help grow our sites. I'm also going to show you one way that I don't use it, which is probably going to surprise you. Before I jump over to my computer and show you those steps, I do have some really big news that I want to share with you. And that is, after talking with my team, we've decided that once we hit 1,000 subscribers on this channel, we're going to reveal one of our sites to you. So this was obviously not a decision that we took lightly. However, we thought that revealing one of our sites was probably the best way to provide value to our subscribers. That way I can show you step by step what we did to take the site from nothing all the way to where it is today. So once I reveal the site, I'm going to create a bunch of videos showing you what we did right, what we did wrong, how we learned from those mistakes, what we're experimenting with, and so on. So hopefully this is really exciting for you guys. It's definitely exciting for us. Um, again, if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely do so. Share this with anybody else that you think would be interested as well. We definitely appreciate it. And if you're wondering why 1,000 subscribers, for us, we just thought that was a big number. So we thought it'd be a good milestone to celebrate and share something big with you guys. So with that being said, let's jump over to my computer and I'm going to walk you through how I use AnswerThePublic.com. All right, guys. So we're over on my computer here. And basically what I want to do with this video is just kind of walk you through how I use the site AnswerThePublic.com. Um, so I don't quite use it the same way as a lot of people. So I'll kind of get, get uh, into that towards the end of the video. But basically, if you're unfamiliar with AnswerThePublic.com, um, it's a website that you can go to. You type in a keyword. It can be one word. It can be multiple words. It can be a small phrase or whatever. You hit enter. And it's going to basically give you a bunch of uh, search results that are um, keywords related to that term. So for me, in this example here, I typed in the word boating and I hit enter. And it produced all these keywords below. So you have some question-based keywords first. So uh, keywords that start with the word are, can, how, and so on. And you scroll down a little bit further, then you, you have uh, some prepositions. So keywords that have the word uh, can, for, is, and so on within it. Um, then you have some comparisons. So this versus this, this or that. And you scroll down a little bit further, then you have alphabetical results as well. So this tool spits out a ton of keywords. And this is how most people will use it. They, they use it to try to find keywords within their niche. Okay. So one way that I use this tool um, and real quick, too, when you first do a search on uh, answerpublic.com, it's going to show up in this visual visualization mode right here. So it looks like this, which looks really nice and it, it can be useful. But for me, I changed it over to data. So you just click that if you want to. And everything is listed like this. OK, um, so one way that I use this tool is I just try to gauge if I'm trying to pick whether or not I want to go into the boating niche and boating is huge. So, of course, there's enough space there. There's enough. Um, there's enough topics to cover and whatnot, but basically what I'm trying to figure out is are there enough uh, problems within the niche to be solved? Because if you're going um, after a display ad site, which is what we do, you're going to be writing a lot of problem solving articles. So how do you do this? Can you do this? Is it safe to do this? So, so those types of things, you're answering a lot of questions. So ideally, if you search something and answer the public, you want to see a lot of questions come up. Okay. If you search something and, and this comes up with no results or very few results, that's probably telling you that there's not enough there to uh, target with that particular niche. So that's one of the ways I use it. Um, you can kind of use it to gauge volume as well, just general volume, volume, just to make sure that there's enough there to go after. Um, and as far as volume goes, I use a tool called Keywords Everywhere. That's what you're seeing with the search volume next to all these terms here. So let me move this down. So you see this K up here. This is a Chrome extension. Um, I cover this more in depth in other videos, so I'm not going to go into detail here, but it's a Chrome and Firefox extension. You can download it. It does cost money, but it's very, very cheap for how long it lasts. Um, and what it does, it'll, it'll, it'll give you estimated search volume next to search terms in answerthepublic.com, um, in YouTube, and mainly in Google search. That's what I typically use it for. And in other videos, I'll show you how to kind of get a more accurate volume based on what it's giving you. Um, but anyways, you can kind of use that tool in combination with answerthepublic.com. Just scroll through, not just question-based keywords, but if you just kind of scroll down, you want to see volumes next to everything. You know, you want to see enough of it to know that there, there are people searching within the niche. So that's just another way you can use it. So especially when you get down to alphabetical here, you should be seeing a lot of search volume. So that's, that's one way to use it. Um, one other way that you can use it as well is to find related subtopics within the niche. So... 
If you're going into boating, you might be trying to think of what are some subtopics I can target with my keyword research. And if you don't know enough about boating, or even if you do, you, there might be things that you don't know about or things you're, that you're forgetting to target. So what you can do is you kind of look through all these keywords here and just try to pick out some words that uh, might be good subtopics to look into. So if you're kind of scroll, um, just glancing through here, you might see something like boating licensing, right? So that's, that's something that could be a subtopic to look into. There might be some keywords there. Um, maybe something related to vertigo or let's see. So boat, boating docks, that might be another one. Boating accidents and deaths. So again, so what you can do is just kind of look through all the keywords and just see, are there any terms in here that are in the boating niche that might be good topics for me to look further into to find more keywords? And you'd be surprised how many that you'll find that you either didn't think to add to your list originally or you didn't even know about. So super simple exercise to go through just to kind of build your list of subtopics before you start doing your keyword research. All right, so those are the ways that I use uh, answerthepublic.com. Like I said before, the way that most people use answerthepublic.com is to find keywords. I do not use this tool to find keywords, and the reason is because everyone else does exactly that. So this tool does not produce a ton of results. As you can see, you have 73 questions here, 56 pre uh, prepositions, and so on. And, and as you look through here, I mean, you only have about 10 results here that start with R, you know, a handful that start with can, and so on. That's not very many. That's a very, very small subset of the in entire list that you could probably find if you use a different method to find your keywords. So if you go into here and you search boating and you make a list of keywords based on what you're seeing here, somebody else is going to do the exact same thing. And now you're targeting the same keywords that they are. So instead, what you want to do is find a different keyword method, which I'll cover in later videos in more depth. But use a different method where you find a lot of other keywords in addition to the ones that are listed here. That way you're targeting something different from what they're targeting. That's kind of what can set you apart uh, from the competition. You're going down a different path. you got to think outside of the box. This is the easy button. You just type in a, you know, a single word here. It gives you a bunch of keywords. You add them to your list. And now I'm writing articles on all these terms here. So you don't want to do that. If you do that, you're going to be competing against a lot of other people that are also trying to take that easy road. So... Like I said, I'll dive into it in a, in a different video. It's definitely, it definitely involves some manual work. It's not super easy. It's kind of a grind. But nonetheless, that's how you find more keywords that no one else even knows about. All right, guys. So I hope that gave you a different perspective on how to use answerthepublic.com or really any keyword research tool out there. Um, anytime you can take a different approach and think outside of the box, it's going to give you different results than everybody else. And that's definitely a good thing. So if you enjoyed the video, Make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Um, as a reminder, once we hit 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to reveal one of our niche sites to you. So the sooner we get there, the sooner you can find out what that site is. Uh, hit that bell icon if you want to be notified of future videos. Head over to PassiveIncomeUnlocked.com if you want more tips for growing your site. Thanks as always for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will see you in the next one.